Reed, this is Crowland Publishing, and today we are doing a character floor on fighters, deep dive on the punching lads themselves. I really like fighters, I think they're one of the most customizable classes, and I think that they have the most real world uh, influences to draw from, and I think that there's a lot to talk about with them, so let's get straight into it, because this is going to be a long one. Fighters, to me, represent characters who battle with discipline and skill. Barbarians are the ones who fight with passion that deranges the senses. Rogues are the ones who specialize in stealth and cheating and sneaking up on you. Bards are very, very showy, charismatic fighters. But fighters are the ones who stand firm, using skill and discipline. They practice, they learn, they treat violence as their trade. They treat violence as their art. The diversity of range within a fighter is incredible. You could make Darth Vader with a fighter, Arcane Knight. You could make the Hound from Game of Thrones. You could make Miyamoto Musashi from History. You could make any of the Knights of the Round Table almost. You could create your favorite wrestler. There's just so much that you can do with fighters. So we've got a lot of ground here to cover. Some examples from pop culture and history are always, I think, really useful when we're talking about fighters, but man, where do we even start? From mythology, we've got Hercules, we've got Samson, we've got Scartha, who drank a cullen, we've got Grazina, who was a Lithuanian a mystical pagan warrior who held off the invading Teutonic Knights. Any of the Trojan War characters are fantastic character types. For fighters, you've got the arrogant Achilles and the mighty Ajax, who failed an important will save. Uh, from more, you've got uh, Alaric, the leader of the Visigoths, Leonidas, of course, from 300. I, I'm a big fan of El Cid, the wily raider of Spain. Tomeo Gozen, uh, she was a Japanese uh, samurai woman, a cavalier, we would call her in D&D terms. Shaka Zulu, the Conan of the Savannah, as someone once said. Spartacus, the great uh, gladiator. Lady True, who I hope I said that right. Uh, the Vietnamese uh, warrior lady with two swords. She's absolutely cool. You should check her out. Maybe the greatest badass to ever live was Musashi. I talked about him before, the sword saint. I like Eric Bloodaxe, the insane Viking, and his witchy wife. The man who was too psychotic for Vikings. From pop culture, well, we've got a few thousand years of that. Um... Bradamante, the great knight from Orlando Furioso. Cain from the Axe of Cain book. I really like that. Um, it was written by a guy who I think he's actually got experience in mixed martial arts. And so Cain is a, what they call an infighter. And he, he even has trained in medicine because it helps him hurt people more effectively. Drus, the old warrior from the Draenei books. He's fantastic. Brienne the Beauty from um, Game of Thrones is cooler in the books. Guts from Berserk. Great example of a straight fighter in a high magic story. Uh, Wesley from The Princess Bride. He's a fighter, maybe with some rogue. Inigo is pure fighter. Captain America is a fighter. Green Arrow is a fighter. War from Star Trek is a fighter. Anyone who primarily deals with violence has at least a few levels of fighter in their character cast. So, you know, birds. Anyway, moving on. We have to, because there's just too many fighters. So, it's very, very handy to think about what kind of organizations might exist for fighters within your campaign world. It just gives you some context to what fighters might look like. And obviously the big one is an army. Join an army. What kind of army? Is it a state-run army? Is it just that you serve the local knight and the knight serves the local count and the count serves the local baron and the baron serves the king? And all that together is an army. Perhaps you have to join a knightly order which would be an organization of people with enough money to afford their own armor and horses and all the rest of it, who then go on to serve a person or an ideal. Maybe you're in a fencing academy, which is, you know, the Western equivalent of a dojo. Maybe you're just in a brigand crew, and that's where you learned how to fight, just Robin dudes. Maybe you were a freedom fighter slash terrorist, a gallow glass like the Irish had. Maybe you were just a fierce warrior culture where everyone likes to fight and everyone has to fight the Segula from the Malazan books, for example. I really like the Livonian Sword Brethren 
from history. They um, hunted down the pagans of Lithuania. Like, I'm, I'm interested in them. The Order of the Dragon, named after a dragon slayer that ended up with a bit of a vampire issue. Warrior lodges are often in tribal cultures. They're an actual um, cast of fighter. And that to join the secret society, you have to prove yourself. Maybe you're a house carl who is a kind of person who is skilled enough with violence that they enter the household of the Lord and they're very, very respected people. Uh, the Sacred Band of Thebes, very interesting. They were a group of men and their boyfriends fought behind them so that they would never look bad in front of their partner. The Levelers, I love the Levelers. They were a group of Puritans who bound together to help the common people and they formed the basis of the new model army. The Varangian Guard, who were a group of Vikings. The Yom Vikings. Oh my god, they're so cool. No end to mercenary companies. So, what does the military might look like in your campaign world? Think about that, and you'll have some inspiration for what fighters look like and where they came from and how they're thought about within the world. So in a world of gods and monsters and dragons and wizards and all the rest of it, what made you decide to deal with all that with a sword or a club or a bow what kind of world is it that you thought that you could make your way just through violence were you just come from a warrior culture where that's just what you do as a mature person you just learn how to fight or you learn how to farm did you have a wrong to avenge did you have a master who trained you well maybe you came from a rich family and uh, you come from a culture in which that is just simply respected to be a fighter. Do you want to be a fighter? Maybe you were trying to save up to go to wizard school and you just didn't have the cash, so you decided to make a few bucks by kicking heads. Maybe you flunked out of being a paladin. Maybe you just were not morally correct enough, or maybe you didn't have the willpower. Maybe you just fell into this because you're a big lad and you're good with your fists. Why fighter? I said before that I thought that fighters tend to represent people who are trained. Is that way for you? <clears throat> Three, two, one. So did you study to become a fighter? Or do you have natural skill? Are you just, you know, like a big, burly maniac who just picks up weapons and is really, really good with them? Or did you study? Did you train more specifically? Do you come out of a pit fighter tradition where you were just thrown in and told to survive are you a highly professional soldier maybe you trained at a dojo or maybe you worked under a specific kind of fencing master perhaps you were a squire to a great knight and you've ended up adventuring somehow what does your skill mean to you where does it come from what do you feel about your own capacity with a weapon and with the ability to make tactical and strategic decisions on the fly. What's that mean to your character? And how does that fit into the game worlds that your DM is presenting to you? Or how, how do you as a DM see the fighter character class? So how do you customize a fighter? How do you really make that fighter unique and stand out? Not only just as a PC playing a character, but as a DM looking to create various kinds of martial traditions. What makes fighters different? Okay, well, I think that the good news is, is that there is literally hundreds of thousands of cultures with warrior traditions from all around the world that we can draw on. From Hawaii to northern Canada. Do you want to look like a cataphract? Do you want to look like a samurai? Do you want to look like a cossack? Do you want to look like a spearman? Do you want to look like a viking axeman? Do you want to look like one of those... Uh, Chinese warriors and their amazing lamellar armor. There's so many ways to visually look like a fighter, to look like a warrior. And also, you should think about your martial abilities. What do you look like when you're fighting? Are you fast? Are you strong? Are you clever? You know, do you sit back and wait, 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 strike? Are you a nimble duelist? Maybe you're spinning around, getting into combat. Maybe you just wade in like a beast just like you know with a mace just smashing things around maybe you're an ice cold sniper and you just sit back with your crossbow and kill 
Are you a defensive fighter? Do you like to parry? Do you like to fence? Or do you just, you know, let enemies wear themselves out on your shield? And you just take it and take it. Are you flashy? Or are you economical? Are you quiet? Or are you loud? What do you look like when you fight? So as we've seen, there's a thousand ways to look like a fighter, to learn to be a fighter and fight like a fighter. So let's talk about multiclassing because an X who can fight creates really strong, very specific and individual character concepts. So let's do a quick survey. Fighter Barbarian. Maybe you've started out as a trained warrior and decided to go native or you just adopted a more freewheeling style or you've gone crazy. Maybe you just want to have some options in combat and Barbarian isn't cultural, just some techniques. Maybe you want to use some of the big old hit Barbarian hit points to represent your role as a defensive fighter. As a fighter bard, perhaps you started out in the army and that was just a way to fund your barding. You know, the old soldier skills rarely go away. Or maybe you're an Indiana Jones style warrior scholar. You just took your fighter abilities first. Maybe violence and death has brought out a more introspective side in you. And so you've decided to think about yourself as an artist. Also, he's a good swashbuckler, if you want to be uh, an Inigo Montoya, like we talked about before. Fighter clerics, well, why aren't you a paladin? Well, maybe you just put down the sword after a long war or a horrible criminal activity or something, and you just, you wanted a break from being a fighter. So you became a priest instead. Or maybe you are an order of martial priests and they won't accept anyone unless you can fight. That's a part of your service to the god. Maybe you uh, just have been around clerics so long in your role as a temple guard that you've picked up some skills and some disciplines. Fighter Druid. You've come around to loving nature and abandoned your old ways maybe, but you still know how to fight. Or perhaps the order of the druids that you want to join is about fighting. They're primarily about defending or attacking some enemy of nature. And you had to prove yourself with weapons before they will take you into the druid order. Fighter Monk. Well, I'd make a lightly armored Wuxia character, like in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. You know, you don't see those guys wear a lot of armor. Uh, or a Jedi style character with some arcane fighter into the mix to really be a fighter who is lightly armored and moves around a hell of a lot on the battlefield. And then you can focus on a weapon rather than hand to hand combat, which is, I think, hand to hand combat, I think, is specifically about being a monk. It doesn't have to be, but that's how I view it. Or maybe just as a fighter, you become so good at fighting, you begin to feel the key power beneath it all and you really want to study the spiritual aspects of your warfare abilities as a fighter paladin perhaps you were a knight and then finally you were accepted into a templar style order or a battlefield conversion happened and you decided oh, i must now swear an oath to the gods or swear an oath to whatever and you change you know it's just that it represents your paladin uh, abilities or maybe something happened to you and you feel compelled to say an oath. Fighter Ranger. Easy enough. You're a fighter, and the ranging part is your military specialism. Or perhaps you were just a fighter who was behind enemy lines and you had to get good at being out there. Maybe you're like Beastmaster from the film Beastmaster. You just want an animal companion like Beastmaster. Or maybe you just want to be good at archery and you figure this is a way to sort of make yourself more of a sniper type. To be fair, I haven't seen a ranger in a very long time in a game of D&D. &D. The rules are pretty bad, and even the new rules aren't that great. But anyway, we're narrative. Anyway, uh, fight a rogue. You're just a rogue who has some skill at fighting. Maybe you're an assassin or a leg breaker, or maybe this is more of a swashbuckling or ninja kind of a thing. Maybe you're a Catwoman-style thief, and the fighter represents your abilities with the whip. Fight a sorcerer. Something happens to you to make you a sorcerer. That's easiest character class in the world to multi-class into. Oh, well, I just found out my mum's a dragon. So now you've got magical powers. Or maybe you just fell into a magical pool or whatever. Or perhaps your martial arts technique 
is somehow occult, somehow supernatural. And this is just your abilities coming out. Uh, and it's not a spell. It's a kata. It's a martial discipline. But it's martial discipline so powerful, it has spell-like abilities built into it. Fighter Warlock. I actually had a great time playing a Fighter Warlock. Um, you're such a promising fighter that a patron sought you out. Or perhaps you became a fighter specifically to get the attention of a patron. You were fighting and wounded and dying and you called out to the forces of darkness or whatever to save you and they did. Or maybe you're kind of in a weird Star Wars Sith style order who believes in fighting as a kind of dark spirituality and that this is how you show your devotion to the forces of darkness is through war and combat. Or a fighter wizard, Elric. Very, very popular fantasy character, Elric, is definitely a fighter wizard. Maybe you are a noble person, and both the supernatural arts and the fighting arts are a part of your education. Maybe you are a wandering scholar into the arcane, but you've got to know, sometimes it's handy to be able to just use an axe, especially if you're in zones where magic might not work, or if you're in a world where magic is suspicious. Or maybe you are a kind of arcane warrior poet and you want to meld these two worlds together and your fighting is as much as a part of your intellectual discipline as your magic is. So there we have it. There is a lot of ways to be a fighter. There is so much more than just I am a grunt in some chainmail armor. Are you a defender? Are you an attacker? Are you a swashbuckler? Are you a precise swordsman? Are you a stone cold killer? Or are you a wild person? Do you fight because it's a good thing to do? Do you fight because it's just the only skill that you have? What keeps you going? Why do you have the bravery to just pick up an axe and hold the forces of darkness at bay when other people require this advanced training and magical blah, hoo hoo and all the rest of it. So I think fighters are interesting. I think they're far, far more of a challenge to roleplay in an interesting way than a wizard or a cleric or whatever. So have a think about it. I hope this was a useful uh, video to you. I really like fighters. I think they, they're very, very cool indeed. And I do not understand why they have a reputation as boring, especially not when there's so many different martial cultures to draw from in the world and so many cool looking fighter types. So anyway, please do subscribe. Very, very handy to me. I'm Reed. This is Crowland Publishing. See you next time.